out here. So we can have a look at the um, Commodore Amiga 500 motherboard. And do a little bit of an overview of it. So let's get at it. So let's um, start by looking at the high on the back of the board. So first you have two connectors here and these are for mouse slash joystick. And then you have the analog audio outputs right and left. And then you have <coughs> the connector for the external floppy disk drives. So you can actually chain um, floppy disk drives. And then you have a full size serial port. And then you have a parallel port. And then you have a power supply connector. And then you have the custom RGB output. And then you have monochrome video. And then we have the um, keyboard connector. So that goes to the um, the cable that goes to the keyboard controller. Then you have the um, uh, floppy disk connector for the internal floppy disk drive. And then you have the power out, power um, connector for the internal floppy disk drive. And then down here you have this here. And this here is the um, uh, memory expand. Well, gen generically speaking, this is the memory expansion connector, but also these memory expansions can actually have a real-time clock on it, so it's not just for memory, but mo mostly 99% of the cases is used to connect in a memory expansion unit. And then you have the uh, side edge connector here with um, conductive um, points on both sides, basically giving you pretty much full access to the uh, processor signaling and this is for external expansion. And then um, down here, which is actually a little bit hard to read, you actually have the information about what this specific board. And the most interesting thing is the revision um, this board is. So this one is revision 5. And then you have the memory, the onboard RAM, and that's these here, this set of chips. And um, well, a little bit of a minor interest, but here you have uh, the reset circuitry for the system. And the audio amplifier, audi audio filter stuff also here. As you see that it, it's quite nicely um, marked uh, on the board with the, on the silk screen exactly what these different things are, or different areas of four. So if we um, talk about the um, chipset, so everything started out with the original chipset, and. Um, it's a chipset used in the earliest Commodore Amiga computers and defined the Amiga's graphical and sound capabilities. Uh, the original chipset appeared in Amiga models built between 1985 and 1990. The Amiga 1000, Amiga 2000, Amiga CDTV and Amiga 500. Uh, the chipset gave the Amiga its, uni its unique graphics features um, consisting of um, three main custom chips Agnus, Dennis and uh, Paula. All three custom chips were originally packaged in 48 pin um, dips. And as you see this isn't really the original so this is the, called the enhanced um, uh, chipset version. But anyway, they, they built them around three, basically three um, custom um, uh, chips. So, so if we have a look at um, Fact Agnus, uh, or Agnus. 
So, what is this? Agnes is the central chip in the design. Controls all access to chip RAM from both the central uh, 6000 uh, processor, which is here, and the other custom chips using a complicated priority system. Agnos includes subcomponents known as blitter, fast transfer of data in memory without in interventions of the process, and the copper video synchronization co processing. The original Agnus can address 512 kilobytes of chip RAM. You see here we have chip RAM. And later revisions dubbed FAT Agnus added 512 kilobytes pseudo fast RAM. And the um, version of this chip specifically, um, or the code for this chip is 8371, and it's on this board. So let's have a look at uh, Denise, which is over here. And Dennis is the main video processor. Um, without using overscan, the Amiga's graphics display is 320 or 640 pixels wide by 200 NTSC stand, video standard, or 256 in the PAL configuration, pixels tall. Uh, Dennis also supports insulation, which doubles the vertical resolution at the cost of, uh, of intrusive flickering on typical monitors of that air. Dennis also supports uh, 8 sprites, single pixel scrolling and a dual playfield mode. Dennis also handles mouse and digital joystick input. And the specific code of this one on the board is uh, 8362R8. So now we're going to have a look at Paula, which is that one. Uh, Paula is primarily the audio chip with four independent hardware mixed 8 bit PCM sound channels, each of which support 65 volume levels, no sound to maximum volume. The waveform output rates uh, from roughly 20 samples per second to almost 29,000 samples per second. Paolo also handles interrupts in various I.O. functions, including the floppy disk drive, the serial port, and the analog joysticks. And the specific one I have here is 8364R7. Oh, and then we have a look at Gary. And um, oddly, it's not really considered a custom chip, but it's uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, it's a um, it's a gate array. So yeah, so I suppose that's why they didn't want to identify it as a um, custom chip in that perspective. So Gary is short for gate array. Uh, Gary provides glue logic for the bus control and houses supporting functions for the floppy disk drive. And the version or the type we have here is 5719. And then we have these two chips here, and they're actually identical. And those are complex interface adapter chips, the IA. It serves as an IO port controller providing for, per, for parallel and serial IO capabilities, as well as timers and time of day cl clock. And the type we're using here is 8520A slash 1. So, so that's all the um, uh, main areas and main components and then of course the, you would wonder okay as you have a processor and you have a custom chipset and um, so where's the code? So that's in something called a kickstart ROM and that's this chip here. So this is the one that contains all the um, yeah, so-called kickstart um, program code. So when the processor starts, it starts executing code from here and then distributes all the stuff to um, needed other sub-processors um, and you know, boot up mechanisms and stuff. And then when it's loaded this code, then it will ask for a, um, it will ask to load a um, so-called bench, workbench diskette. Um, on the display, so then it will, um, it'll be predominantly on this disk, this drive. 
So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. The idea was just to give a general overview of you know, what is a Omega 500 motherboard. I must emphasize that the exact configuration of the motherboard is dependent on the revision. And there are many different, quite a few different revisions um, that you might find in different machines. And um, it might use the original chipset or the enhanced chipset and then um, yeah, there be very, very many variations of, uh, of the um, uh, onboard RAM. Um, but um, the circuit diagrams, as I see it, they, you, you can locate them online if you just use a bit of creative searching. So, um, <coughs> but then you have to be, again, come back to this, that you have to actually be very specific. That I, Like I have a revision 5. Uh, motherboard, then I have to go looking specifically for revision 5 on uh, schematics, otherwise, you get misled. Uh, plus, Commodore had an, uh, an annoying habit of sometimes hot wiring fixes on their um, boards, so you can't uh, not always 100% um, rely on the schematics you, you get, even if it's a revision 5 schematic. So here's a typical example of a hot fix. <laughs> so the, uh, added, added, added resistor, obviously not planned to be on the board. So, so you, you may or may not um, find this in the rev revision five schematics. It might have been added onto some uh, addendum for that schematic. But of course, it's not. It's pro for the for the main part. It's it's not really a big deal. Uh, when it comes to I could take capacitors, uh, resistors, um, pretty much all the other chips, either um, they are um, diodes, uh, pretty much off the shelf components. So, uh, ah, well maybe this one here is not, not off the shelf, or neither is this one here. Well, I mean, gener generally, speaking anything that one would potentially need to swap out on a normal basis that's um, yeah you, you, you can still buy them uh, there seems to be a very big aftermarket for um, the custom chips so at least at the year of recording this video this does not seem to be a shortage shortage of um, of these different um, uh, circuit chips even even the custom MOS chips. The, um, the MOS chips were actually made by Commodore themselves, so Commodore had its own uh, manufac ship manufacturing. So that's defunct. I mean, to a great extent, all the custom chip logic has been captured into FPGA implementations, um, lots of different software emulation solutions. So. I think the from an intellectual property perspective, uh, there's no <laughs> there's, there's no there's no risk that this stuff is going to die. I've not never really seen anybody making a chip to chip replacement solution, even if um, theoretically I think such a thing would be possible, since as I said, the the logic has been captured into FPGA implementation. But um, I suppose that's because there's been such a good aftermarket availability of chips even 30, you know, 35 years after the product has been stopped being made. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think that pretty much summarizes it. So if you're um, interested in supporting these initiatives, consider buying me a cup of coffee and the energy to write the scripts and um, there's merch available also. And um, continue watching for more Amiga 500 related and other products related fun. And I'll see you in the next one.